friends, if you've ever been confused by APIs and API keys and how to use them in your OpenAI assistance, well, in this video, I'm going to talk about APIs and how it works. How can you use it when you're working on your AI development projects? Before I do, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you get updated every time I drop a new video. Plus, this will help me spread the word to other people who want to start their journey in AI development create amazing AI products. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's a way for different software applications to communicate with each other. Think of it as a bridge that allows two separate programs to exchange information and work together. API keys are like special passwords or digital key that allows your program, such as a Python script, to access and use a particular API. They help identify your program and grant it permission to access the API service and data. So if you're building any application, using Python, you can embed the API key in your code. For example, you can use the OpenAI API key to call functions from the OpenAI server. Here's a simple analogy to help you understand API keys. Imagine you have a clubhouse and only certain members can enter. This person has an API key. This person does not have an API key. Because this person has an API key, they can enter the establishment. This person cannot. And this key identifies them as a valid member and allows them to enter the clubhouse and use the facilities. While doing so, the business could also track the usage of the facilities and also potentially charge them for that service. OpenAI provides a powerful API that allows developers to access and leverage their language models, such as GPT 2.5, 4, 4.5 Turbo, for various natural language processing tasks like text generation, translation, and analysis. If you've never accessed an API key before, you'll need to go to platform.openai.com, API keys, and then you're going to click the section called API keys, where you can now create your own API key. So you're going to create a new secret key, you're going to add a name to it, you can assign a project, and because you're the owner of the account, you can set the permission to all. Now, if you have certain members of your team, perhaps a developer or another person who is working with you, but you do not want them to have all the access to the API functions, you can restrict their access, create the key, and assign it to that specific person. But since you're the owner, you're going to create the secret key, and then you will get something like this. It starts with SK, and make sure you store the API key somewhere securely, copy it, and use it in your applications. I'm going to show you now how you can create your own OpenAI assistance from outside the OpenAI platform in your own local environment or in your own AI development projects. So we're going to go to Google Collaboratory. It's, it allows you to write Python code in the cloud without any setup or integration and without having to worry about resources. You can immediately start playing with Python and running code. So we're going to install the OpenAI package. Package is a collection of functions, OpenAI has conveniently put all their functions in one uh, repository and we're going to download that. We are then going to import the OpenAI package as well as the OpenAI function. Don't worry about uh, the text in the green, they're just commented out, they're not going to run in the code. What we're focused on is the client object. We're going to initiate that client object which is essentially the OpenAI function authenticated with our API key. So we have the OpenAI function that we downloaded and we have our API key, as you remember, we just created. And when we run this code, you will notice a green check mark that means the code has ran successfully and we now have a client object. If you run this section, you'll basically see the client object right here. Now you might be wondering, Imtiaz, what can I do with the client object? Now my friend, it unlocks so much opportunities for you to access all the functions provided by OpenAI. So if you now have your API key, you need to bookmark this page, API Reference. You need to go to this link right here and bookmark this page. This is going to be your best friend when you're developing projects that use OpenAI Assistant API. We're going to go over to the Assistant and it's going to give you a list of functions that you can use within the Assistant. If this is your first time using this, you want to convert this to Python so you can use this as Python code. Notice it is the same way that we've initiated the OpenAI function as well as created our client object, except our client object is authenticated with our API keys. Now to create an assistant, all you need to do is copy this section right here with the parameters for creating the assistant and you can just create it in your own environment. 
Now, OpenAI also provides more description about the properties and how to use that exactly. So you can also read over it to understand any potential limitations or any uh, thing you need to be aware of. You're also going to see a response section here. This is basically telling you what kind of responses you would expect by running this function. So let's go ahead and copy this code, go back to our environment, paste it. Since I already have it ready and loaded up, we're going to create an assistant. We'll call this eTax Helper. You're a helpful assistant. You answer a question related to taxes, answer in 50 tokens or less. We're going to specify the model that we're going to use and any potential tools. As you know, tools are could be knowledge bases, custom functions, or a code interpreter. We'll get rid of this parameter. We don't need this for now. We'll just create a basic question and answer assistant. Once the assistant is created, you can pull out the assistant ID. Another cool thing is you can access the assistant from the OpenAI platform as well, once it's created in the development environment. You can also go to the usage section to track the usage and your costs for using the OpenAI Assistant API and their services. Again, thank you for watching. Hopefully this video helped you understand API. It's no longer a mystery anymore. You can now use API and API keys for your AI development projects. I'm excited to see what you're going to create with OpenAI Assistant API. If you found value in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you get updated every time I drop a new video. Share it with your friends and also don't forget to join my school community where I give you more resources to help you master AI, master Python and build amazing AI apps so that you can go out there and take charge of the AI revolution. Don't get left behind. I understand API, but there's another essential concept that will put you ahead of everyone else. This is RAG. RAG is a fundamental concept for your OpenAI assistant. Make sure you watch this video to understand how it works. And make sure you watch these videos to see how you can deploy your OpenAI assistance with a streamlit application. GPT pioneers, let's go.